Hey everyone, welcome to Vineyard Church. We are so excited that you're joining us for another Sunday morning experience. We've been praying for you, expecting God to move in our community, move in your home this morning, and we're excited for what God has in store. My name is Jeff, I'm the lead pastor here. This is Matt, and we have Corey as well, ready to lead us in worship. And I wanted to mention on the front end too that we're gonna be taking communion again today. And so if you want to grab your elements, your your bread, your juice, your crackers, whatever it is to represent the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we'd invite you to do that. It was a special moment last Easter, and we're going to be continuing to do that together as a display of unity in the body of Christ across our city as we're all separated during this time. Let's worship together and see what God has in store for us this morning. Now come Holy Spirit. Sing, Awaken My Soul. Awaken my soul. Come awake. To hunger, to seek, to thirst. Come awake and do as you did at first. Spirit of the living God, come for the fresh heart. Come wake me from my sleep Roll through the caverns of my soul Pour in me to overflow Overflow
let your glory now invade. Let him hear you cry out, oh Spirit, come and fill this place. Let your glory.
become more aware let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience Glory of your sing it again, let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your together in our homes and we gather in your presence and we declare your goodness we declare your goodness like the Psalms so many times over and over chapter after chapter we say that your love endures forever and that you are good that you are good God that you are faithful Well, good morning, Vineyard Church. My name is Jeff. I'm the lead pastor at the Vineyard. We are so glad uh, to be doing church with you this morning, humbled really that you're inviting us into your home, your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you're worshiping God this morning. We pray and hope that last week was special for you. Our entire staff was praying uh, that Easter would be a unique moment for each and every one of us, that Worshiping together, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus would be special, and I'm sure you saw, but communion was incredibly special for me last week. It was just a unique opportunity to share that together. We'll be taking communion again this week, and so I'd invite you, if you don't have your communion elements already, to make sure you grab that over the next few minutes, because we'll be sharing in communion again uh, later in this service. Well, I'm excited that we are kicking off a new series today. Uh, I think a timely series since we're all stuck at home trying to figure out how to navigate this COVID-19 pandemic. The series is called The Power of Prayer. And over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to look at a few different themes, a few different topics on the power of prayer. But we're going to start the series today with a message that I've titled The Power of Intercession. The power of intercessory prayer, maybe you could say. that, In other words, praying on behalf of of another. If you want a, a working definition for kind of that fancy word intercession, it simply means this, praying on behalf 
of another. Sometimes that other person is you, but most often when you navigate the scriptures, when you look at the stories in the Bible, intercession is happening when someone is praying for another person. So let's pray for the message here this morning, then we can jump right in. God, thank you so much that we can worship you near or far, that we can worship you together or separate. And thank you that you bring us together through the unity of your presence and your power and the unity that comes through your love. So we invite you now, Holy Spirit, to come and move in our hearts through this talk in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to start by telling you a little bit about my life and kind of my prayer journey. For most of my life, I, I was not a man of prayer. Right? I, mean, I mean, seriously, for, for years, I, I never prayed. And if I ever did pray, I, I guess it was like to some ethereal or mystical being somewhere up in the sky that, w- that was more like a genie than, than an actual God. I would just pray that I would win my next baseball game or that I would get to go on a date with a pretty girl. I mean, it, it was totally self-serving, way off base, and I didn't even know who I was talking to. But when I started taking my faith seriously, especially in college, I became just obsessed with prayer. I I, I remember going to a Christian bookstore. This was was before the days of the Amazon empire. I remember going into a Christian bookstore, finding the entire bookshelf on prayer and just putting it all in the basket. I bought every single book that I could on prayer and and some of them were not very good books, but I, I just bought them all, I didn't care. And as as I studied scripture, every time I ran across somebody praying, I studied it. Anytime I saw prayer impacting change or or praying that that released some kind of godly activity, I just studied it. I couldn't get enough of it. I I was enthralled with this idea that we as the created beings could approach the creator God and and have a divine conversation with them. I mean, if you think about the mystery of prayer, it is a phenomenal thing to, uh, to get caught up in. That we can approach God and we can have a divine conversation with him at any time we want. But not only that, when we, when we approach God, we can experience God. We can feel his love and we can feel his pleasure over us. And if, and if that's not enough... God will actually hear your prayers and respond on your behalf. And that's the message that we're really looking at today as we focus on intercessory prayer. It's this this wild theological thought that God hears our prayers and will change circumstances in our lives or the lives around us based on those requests. That is an amazing thing to think about. And before we go any further, I think it's it's probably valuable to just pause for a moment and kind of wrestle with some of the questions around prayer. I know many of us have struggled with questions about prayer, its effectiveness, or, or, or things like that before. So let's just ask a really basic question on the front end of this message. Why pray? Why pray? I mean, this is a, this is a serious question to ask. It might seem silly, but lots of people have this question. Lots of us have probably had that question. Even as I'm navigating intercessory prayer this morning and kicking off the series, this question might be emerging in your own mind and in your own heart. I mean, I, I know it says in the Bible to pray. I know, I know Jesus told us to pray, but, but why? Does it do anything? Does, it, does prayer really make a difference? Or maybe uh, a different kind of iteration of the same question, how effective is prayer or what kind of difference does it make? I mean, isn't God going to be God and do godly things anyway? Why do we have to ask? If he's so good and so loving, shouldn't he already be doing good and loving things? Why is he inviting us to to pray and, and almost release some of those things on earth as it is in heaven? Why, Why do we need to pray to a God who's all-seeing and and all-knowing and all-powerful? These are questions that we've asked before. And and maybe we think, you know, are are we just partnering with what God is already doing? Are we really impacting the world around us? Or or is is when when we pray, is it really just God changing our hearts so that we'll be more in tune with his will and pray more effective prayers? Or perhaps when we pray, we, we somehow invite the kingdom of God to draw near. And when the kingdom of draw, God draws near, it, it somehow releases and brings all kind of kingdom blessings with it. These are, 
legit questions. And there's probably answers to all of them that kind of coalesce in this beautiful mystery called prayer. But I want to share some stories from the Bible this morning. Because in the stories, there, there again, you're presented with this mystery of prayer. This invitation to intercede on behalf of others and, and on behalf of entire people groups. I won't have time to read every word in, in every story this morning, but I will share uh, the exact Bible verses where these stories are coming from. I would invite you to, to read those throughout the rest of your week. I mean, you have like 168 hours or something uh, in your week. I'm going to take up about 30 minutes of those this morning. So we all have plenty of time to dig into these scriptures later in the week. But let's look at Exodus 32 for starters. Exodus 32 verses 1 through 14. Now this is, this is a crazy story. This is a crazy story that the Israelites had just been rescued by God out of Egypt. God's leading them through the desert and Moses just leaves for a little while and the next thing you know the Israelites are making a golden calf to worship instead of the true living God who just rescued them out of Egypt. This is a bizarre story and God sees it and he tells Moses that the people are going to be destroyed. And then he's just going to start over with a clean slate with Moses. But Moses prays. Moses prays and he asks God to relent. And in verse 14, depending on your translation, it says that God actually changed his mind about what he was going to do. That he responded and listened to Moses' prayer. This is kind of a crazy story. Or what about this one in Isaiah 38, verses 1 through 8? This is one of my favorites in the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah 38, King Hezekiah is, is dying. And God tells him to get his life and his affairs basically in order because he's sick and, he, and he's not going to live through this illness. You know, you look at Isaiah 38 and you look at our lives right now. I mean, this, this kind of applies for some of us who are, who are maybe fighting COVID-19 or know somebody who has. So God, God comes to Hezekiah says, you need to get your life in order. Hezekiah just weeps and prays and he says, God, remember me. I've always tried to do my best. I've always tried to honor you. And then in a supernatural kind of turn of events, God answers Hezekiah's prayer and he lives through the illness. I mean, I, I can keep going and going and going with stories like this found in scriptures, but what about the very words of Jesus in Luke 11? Luke 11, verses 1 through 13, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. And he uses a story, really really an illustration that basically goes like this. There's a friend who, who has, a, has somebody come over to his house late at night, and he doesn't have any bread to give his friend. So he goes next door, knocks on the door, and says, I, I need bread for my guests. Won't you come out? But, but the owner of that home doesn't answer the door. It's late at night. His kids are already in bed, the doors are already locked, but the knocking just persists over and over and over again. This neighbor will not give up until he has some bread. And it says in the story that finally the man gets out of bed, opens up the door, hands his neighbor some bread, and they go about their way. And then Jesus says this, you need to knock and keep on knocking. You need to ask and keep on asking. He's teaching his disciples that there's something in the place of prayer that's tied to perseverance, that's tied to persistence. You never know when that answer is going to come. And so you need to keep asking and keep knocking and keep asking and keep knocking. Never give up in your prayers because you never really quite know when those prayers might be answered. And this is Jesus teaching his disciples. This is Jesus teaching us how to pray and never give up. There's amazing stories in the Bible about God's response to prayer. I don't know what you do with those stories. Sometimes I don't know what I do with those stories. I mean, we could argue this morning, did, did God actually change and, and pivot what he was going to do? Or, or did we just finally come into alignment with God's will? Did, did prayer somehow change the circumstances? Or did the act of praying actually just change me? Or, or, or maybe we could argue well, God's universal will and God's circumstantial will were, were always the same, even, even if God's circumstantial will has some wiggle room into it. It's going to end at the same point, right? I mean, lots of really smart people have argued over the interpretations of these texts. And although it would probably be a lot of fun to get into that theological argument uh, together this morning, I want to share with you just a little bit of a secret of mine as a pastor. 
the pastor of, of Vineyard Church, uh, uh, about my opinion on these interpretations and, and where you specifically land. Okay, this is, this is my secret for you. I, I don't really care where you land. <laughs> I mean, I, I really don't. I mean, I, like, I love theological thought, and I love arguing theological thought. It, it's a spirited debate is invigorating to me. But I don't really care what side of the coin you land on when you interpret these scriptures. I, it doesn't bother me if you're more, no, I was changed through the act of prayer, or, or no, this act of prayer actually changed the circumstances around me. That doesn't bother me so much. What I'm really interested in, what I care so much about, is that you'll read these scriptures and you'll begin to believe that prayer makes a difference. You'll begin to pray yourself. I, I, I don't care so much where you land on the argument. What I really care about is that you pray and that you commit yourself to a lifestyle of prayer because what I feel like we can see at ground zero in these, in these stories is this central fact to our faith, that prayer changes things. That prayer changes things. Yes, it changes you, and it seems like it changes the things around us. When we pray, and, and I mean when we pray with persistence and faith and expectation, when we pray, things change. And not, not always, right? Not always. There are prayers that go unanswered. I'm sure many of you have prayed with incredible faith for things maybe for years, and you, and you haven't seen those prayers answered. We've, we've lost jobs. We've lost family and, and friends. We've lost things that are incredibly near and dear to us. I've, I've lost family and friends. In times when I, I feel like I've been praying with the most faith that I've ever had in my life, not every prayer is answered. But, but what I've noticed is this, that over the long haul in my life and in the lives of, of people that are around me, that the people who pray for big things, and pray often for big things, tend to see the activity and the power of God in their life more than people who never pray. And it's not always this amazing supernatural experience, right? Like oftentimes we pray and then we step into partnership with God and we have to do some things alongside God's activity, right? I mean, you, you want to pray for a better marriage, but it's also important that you step into that marriage and do some of the hard work. You want to pray for more sales accounts, but it's also important that you go and introduce yourself to all kinds of new potential clients. You want to pray that your neighbors and your friends would give their life to Christ, but you also don't want to be afraid to share your faith with them. Right? The people who pray for big things and pray often tend to see more of God's power in their life. Simply put, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. And so on that central truth, I want to invite you to three different things this morning. I, you can pick one, you can pick two, you can, you can pick all of them. But these are three things that I want to invite you to, and I want to invite our church into over the course of the, of the coming weeks and really throughout this series. First, I want to invite you to go on a prayer walk. And it's, it's, it's really hard right now to go into people's homes and, and to lay hands on them and pray for them and ask God to move on their behalf, but we can all go for a walk. We can all go out with our kids. We can all take our dog for a walk. If, if you want just some quiet time alone to yourself, this might be a really good idea, but you could go for a prayer walk. I would love to see our church just paint the city in prayer through prayer walks over the course of the next few weeks. I think this is going to be one of the most effective ways that, that we as a church can love Fort Collins, that we can be missionaries to the city around us, is by praying for it. As you walk through your neighborhood, you can, you can pray for the different houses you walk by, pray for their health, pray for their finances, pray that they would come to know Jesus, pray for open doors to share your faith with them or invite them to our online church experience. I'm telling you right, right now, I wholeheartedly believe that this is one of the best ways we can serve our city right now is by going for a prayer walk and painting the city in prayer. My one little side note encouragement for you was that you can do this, uh, it would be that you can do this in a very naturally supernatural way. 
Like you don't have to do the walls of Jericho thing where you walk around someone's house seven times and blow the shofars and use the tambourines, okay? You can be very normal in your prayer walks. It could be an enjoyable experience as you partner with God uh, in our city. So that's number one. I want to invite you to go on prayer walks. Number two, I would invite you to make a prayer list, to actually make a list of the things that you like to pray for. And I'm kind of shaking my head as I say that because I really hate lists, I am not a list kind of guy. That's much more Natalie, my wife. I, I sometimes get stressed just even seeing a list. And, I, and I've heard all of the arguments, right? Like, I don't want to pray with a list. I, I've heard these arguments because I've said them myself. I don't like praying with a list because it's too rigid. It's not spirit-led. Like how, how am I going to bounce from one thing to the next? Don't give me a list. It's, it's, it's not very organic, I've said all of these things, but again, one of the things that I've learned in in my own life and in in people's lives that I watch who are very faithful in the place of prayer is that typically speaking, people with lists pray more often than people without them. And not only that, they pray for specific people that have their specific requests and, and they see specific results when they pray through that list and then they know exactly how to honor God and worship him for all that he's done. So I want to invite you to pray through a list, to make a short list of a few things that are on your heart. You could pray for our government. You could pray for our church. You could pray for leaders to make wise decisions. Pray for your family and your neighbors and and your friends and ask God to move on their behalf. Final invitation, I would invite you to join our Wednesday night prayer group. I would invite you to log on every Wednesday night. One of our pastors, Bristow Hood, uh, launches online a a intercessory prayer group Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. We can put those notes online for you so that you can follow that. But this is a powerful, powerful experience. People from all over our church are gathering and and we're doing this very thing. We're, We're asking God to move. On behalf of our city, on behalf of our world, we're asking God to move on behalf of specific people to pour out his presence and love and to break through in this unique moment in our history. This is something that I absolutely would want to invite you to be a part of, to joining with other people in our church, praying and asking God to move. I mean, if the church isn't going to pray, nobody else is going to pray right? Like if if we as believers don't step up and say, this is a way that I can serve the city. This is a way that I can effectively serve and love this city in a way that maybe nobody else is doing it. Then we can do this together as a church. We can stand and we can pray and we can ask God to move. So I want to invite you to join me and to join us as a church, asking God to break through in this time, to go on prayer walks, to make a prayer list, to to join us on Wednesday nights and commit to asking God and to continually ask God to move on our behalf. Let me close with this simple statement. If you want to see more of God's activity in your life, if you want to see more of God's power and presence, if you want to experience more of God's breakthrough in your life, then pray for it. All throughout scripture, we see that prayer changes things, that God responds to prayer. The world is full right now of people who are not praying and trying to answer some of life's biggest challenges. As a church, as Christians, let's unite together and ask God to move. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for the way that you invite us into this place of prayer. Thank you so much that you have given us the honor of being able to stand with you and pray and and ask and, and to intercede on those around us. God, we pray that you would create in us a hunger and a thirst to find ourselves deeper in the place of prayer. Help us to partner with you, God, in what you're already doing and invite the kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, at this point in our vineyard services after the talk, we always move into a time of reflection. Last week, we took communion for the first time as a church family. Excuse me. And we're going to continue that together. 
I think probably for the foreseeable future, we'll continue to take communion together just as a way to stay united with one another as we're all separate. And so if you have your bread, if you have your crackers and your juice, I would invite you to pull them out to to get ready to take communion together. My wife made a lovely loaf of sourdough, so I upgraded a little bit from last week. But why don't you grab your family, grab your loved ones, and, and grab your elements, and let's take communion together. You know, the last supper when Jesus met with his disciples after he washed their feet, he took the bread and and he said, this is my body, symbolically representing my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you take this, do it in remembrance of me. This is Christ's body on the cross, broken for you and for me. And then he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that represents a new covenant, a new way of how we can do relationship together. This is my blood shed and sacrificed for you. Through this, you can have forgiveness of sins. Every time you take this, do this in remembrance of me. This is a unique moment, not only in our history, but as we take communion together, this is a unique moment in our church where through this sacrament, we can connect with God. And as the body of Christ, we can also connect with one another. Let's pray. God, thank you for your body broken for us. Thank you for your blood shed for us. We take this now in remembrance of you and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to show us the love and show us the very presence of God right now. Help us to experience you, God, as we take communion together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's continue to worship together.
another Sunday morning experience to worship together, to pray together, to take communion together. If you want, now would be a great time to respond to God in the ways that he's been generous to you. You can be generous back to him. You can give online. We'll keep the chat section open for a few more minutes. You can say hi to your friends. And the live prayer chat will continue to stay open as well. If you want prayer this morning, you can ask for it. We would love to pray with you on that format as well. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Looking forward to navigating this series together and seeing what God might do. Have a great rest of your morning.